Hey, and welcome back to Adobe Live. I am here today with Emily Nathan and Dan Tom. Hello, uh, hello. I like that you're 100% SF behind there, Dan. I had to rock this shirt. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's the problem. Dan, you really are 100%. I am 100%. Dan, Dan, born and raised. Dan is one I have of the, two of these, by the, the way. few people living in San Francisco who's from San Everly, Francisco. Everly. It's like a, a, an elite club. <laughs> so today we're going to be talking about mobile photography, mm -hmm. primarily. Um, and Hello, people. Yeah, and I guess it's welcome back to you guys as well, since mm -hmm. you were both here yesterday. And Emily, I think you've been broadcasting live from here 24 hours a day for the I last just, week. Yeah, I just live here. Is that pretty much where yeah. we're at at this point? Her sleeping bag <laughs> is right here. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just, we just keep her locked up here. Um, no, I had a nice long commute this morning in traffic on the Bay Bridge. Oh, yeah. One Some days it, it's just mystery. Some days it's chill. Some days it's insane. So in case there are people who are new just tuning in now, mm -hmm. watch yesterday or haven't watched the 47 previous times that you were on earlier this week, Emily. You want me to tell you who I, I am and what I do? I want you to tell me who you are, <laughs> what you do, and a little bit about uh, what you guys will be talking about okay. today. Cool. The work you'll be showing. Well, one thing that, well, here, so I'm Emily Nathan. Um, I'm the founder and publisher of a lifestyle travel magazine called Tiny Atlas Quarterly, which is online principally, um, but we have our biggest community is on Instagram at Tiny Atlas Quarterly. Um, my personal one is there as well. Um, I My training, I'm a commercial photographer by trade. I started as an editorial photographer and then I moved into lifestyle advertising and then I sort of started Tiny Atlas by accident <laughs> on a lark um, and then it sort of eclipsed a lot of parts of my life. Um, but it's really fun. It's great to be involved with so many people around the world. Um, it's taking us lots of really interesting places. Um, so yeah, it, um, it's great. We have a book coming out next year. We have a hashtag that is My Tiny Atlas on Instagram, and the book is going to be kind of a My Tiny Atlas book. And um, and what started as a little personal project has like six million or almost six million posts on it. Um, I think something like that, and um, maybe it's 5.8 million at the moment, um, where we're connecting with just tons of people all the time. And um, it started as a personal project, then we started working with like a, a small group of photographers that sort of had reached out to me who I knew or knew of, um, working on feature travel stories with um, a lifestyle element. One thing, we, we used to have a feature that was just portraits and another one that was just landscape. Now we just have everything that's just sort of about place. Um, but it's an interesting, like overriding ethos to Tiny Atlas in a way where the portraits all had a sense of place and the places all had a sense of humanity. And in general, that's sort of our vibe. Um, what are you gonna be showing us today? And Dan is a photographer and a designer and we've worked with him on stories in the magazine, but then we're also doing a lot experientially, like in the world, going places with one photographer or groups of photographers. Um, so Dan's done feature stories with us from Chile, um, but then he also came with us to Tahiti, Tahiti and Maria and, and, and to India. India. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna look at some, we're gonna talk about mobile photography, both editing, and Instagram or strategy and um, also shooting a little bit. Um, we did some stuff earlier with Tyson um, in the same realm. So we'd love to hear from you guys who are listening what you want to talk about because there's a lot to talk about and we can kind of talk about it all. But if there's stuff that you're more interested, like, hey, we really want to talk about shooting or we just want to see all editing all the time, then we won't talk about tips and tricks for when you're actually shooting before you're editing. Dan, you want to say a few words? Yeah, um, so my name is Dan, last name is Tom. I am born and raised in the Bay Area, which is why I'm wearing this shirt. Nice. Um, I got into photography kind of later, so I, I do design. I was doing design after college, and then uh, stumbled upon photography when I took my first international trip. Uh, with, with, with the church that I was going to a while back. Um, kind of slowly fell in love with it, got my first SLR about six, seven years ago, and brought it everywhere with me, shot like crazy. I shot like the food I ate, shot uh, <laughs> friends I would hang out with, um, just had it pretty much attached to my body at all times. Um, so I, I shot like that, I started a blog a long time ago, and then I, I got Instagram five years ago, 
And Instagram kind of opened a lot of doors for me and I got a little bit more serious about editing. Uh, kind of took more initiative on my, on my part, like traveling to places on my own and investing in kind of this hobby that I, I really love to do. And through Instagram and kind of gaining a following and connecting with people like Emily and Tiny Atlas, um, more opportunities were kind of coming to me and hoping to make that more of a full-time thing in the future. I like that there's like, I think that's a picture of yours from Tahiti that's behind us and then floating dots. With the floating dots? Those weren't there at the time. Yeah, we're trying to catch them. <laughs> trying to catch one. Oh, too late. That. Catch a floating dot. Um, so yeah, you guys let us know. Yeah, definitely let us know if you guys want to talk about anything uh, in particular regarding mobile, travel, or just regular photography. We, one thing that's fun, which I we sort of strategized, Tyson was here with us um, earlier today and this week, and he doesn't live here anymore. He has lived in San Francisco, so he knows it pretty well, and he knows what he loves, but he often likes to visit Mount Tamalpais, which is um, a beautiful mountain just over the Golden Gate Bridge from San Francisco, and so yesterday we went um, as a little group and went up the hill for sunset mission. Um, and so we took a bunch of photos yesterday, so we've got a bunch of like new material. And um, in the last segment, Tyson edited a photo of Dan. Um, and maybe Dan's gonna <laughs> edit a photo of Tyson. It all comes um, around. And we have stuff that's shot on mobile, as well as um, Tyson is shooting on his Leica, and uh, Dan and I are playing with the new Hasselblad. The new Hasselblad. What's it called? Uh, the X1D. The X1D. It's their first digital medium mirrorless format camera. Yeah, and um, so we were playing with those, as well as shooting on a phone. Um, yeah. So yeah, what is, who um, has tried Superimpose app? I don't even know. To Tom and Jan, who likes Snapseed app? Uh, Snapseed is a mobile editing app that I love that app. I use that a lot actually now. I'll show you guys uh, how I use it in the near future. I can do it now too. Cool. Should I awesome. just go into it? Uh, well, well, yeah, before we jump yeah. into it, let me say a couple quick yeah. things. Um, so today, you guys who are watching have the opportunity to have Emily and Dan review, review your portfolio. What do uh, they have to do to do Yeah, that? so uh, if you're at behance.net slash live, um, if you look right up above the chat window, you'll see a button that says Portfolio Review. So if you click on that, you'll get full instructions for how to submit your portfolio to us. Um, we will pick uh, two portfolios to review during the segment. Oh, okay. That's what I was curious, because yeah, okay. we had other ones where we had like a lot of... There's going to be two portfolios to yeah. review. So, um, so just an opportunity for people who are watching to have you guys um, kind of evaluate and comment on their work and provide feedback on their work. Cool. So it's a really valuable opportunity for people. So I really yeah. encourage you to submit uh, a link to your portfolio. Um, and uh, then, one note from the portfolio, like if people, if you make sure to come back around when we're doing it, it um, or stay the whole time, um, it's great to know like any questions that you have from the portfolio review because normally a portfolio review is like with something in mind, like it's a magazine, people want to work for the magazine, mm -hmm. In this case, there's like the magazine, there's a personal photographer, and there's sort of a brand. So just let us know what kind of feedback you're most interested in, and we can sort of tailor the feedback in that way. And then in addition to the opportunity uh, to have your portfolio reviewed, of course, we also have uh, our chat and win, this segment. So probably in about 25 minutes, we'll have chat and win, which is your up, oh yeah, this awesome <laughs> notebook. Um, so uh, that'll be your opportunity to I chat with us in the chat window at behance.net slash live. Uh, and, uh, and win awesome prize. So you guys want to jump into mobile photography in Mount Tam? Yeah, well maybe before we go to Mount Tam, let's go to, let's look at India for a minute, because I think oh, yeah. the Mount Tam's yeah. in. Uh, one thing that's funny with photographers is that, or you have, Did or you I have it up here. Um, I have some stuff from India live. Oh, you want to use your computer? yes, sorry. Okay. Or wait, should I do it? I think mobile? it's already plugged in. No. Uh, you want to use your laptop to show? Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Please stand by. <laughs> <laughs> Moments away. That's all I needed to do. Now I know. Okay. Um, oh, and we, we can talk about what was shot on mobile, and then maybe like there's maybe Dan will pull one up and show some adjustments of something yeah, that's a um, good idea. that was on this. So recently, we worked on a project with a client. Um, a couple of clients doing some stuff with Adobe, but um, also worked with a travel company in India called Kamalan to visit Tamil Nadu. And Dan came with us and took a bunch of really beautiful photos. What was really great 
um, is we had like a really immersive experience. We were with local guides, spoke the language, spoke the local language. So we were able to communicate really seamlessly, um, which is really nice. And, and there's an international language of photography of nods and smiles and winks. And a lot of people obviously speak English. None of us speak Tamil. Um, but we learned how to say Nandri, so we got that. That's, that's all my Tamil, I think, at the moment. Um, but yeah, so Dan is really known um, for his landscapes, but we, he takes wonderful travel photos too. And, um, and so we wanted to get into some of these. Oh, what I was gonna say is like, as photographers, I think we're always um, drawn to whatever we've done most recently. So like, because we were all on Mount Tam last night, we wanna like spend time on that. But this is, these are some really incredible images. This is one that we brought up the other day, but um, that I think is phenomenal of uh, Dan's that is striking. One thing that Tyson said in this last segment, which I think is really great advice um, for anyone, for portfolios, or photography in general, of what you're showing your work. Um, he said, show images like on your portfolio that you feel that no one else could have taken um, and that no one, uh, you know, ideally that you haven't seen before. And I think mm -hmm. everyone has a unique experience in life. You know, no one else than Dan was in Tamil Nadu in this field, talking to this lady at this time, um, taking this picture, um, but the picture itself stands out. And like, so um, there's like the formal reasons why it stands out. And then there's also a little bit of fun yeah, the, like the, editing. The, the, funny, the funny thing with this picture is actually, I had left my SLR in the van and we, we had done maybe like a quarter mile walk to get lunch in at, at like a homestay. And so in the we were, of like rice and it was, patties. and it was like a hundred, probably a hundred degrees. So I actually ran back to the van, grabbed my camera, because we saw these uh, these herders, and she was one of them. There's a group of like maybe four or five, uh, just herding like cattle and sheep. And so I just saw it as like such, this is such a unique opportunity. Not to mention like I mean, where else am I ever going to see this possibly in my life? So I ran back to the van, grabbed my camera, and then was able to get this image. Um, so do you want to talk about what you did on the editing side on this picture? Uh, yeah, I can like, bring it up on my, on the original. Um, I think it'd be cool to see, or I guess we're supposed to be doing mobile and this is not a mobile thing and then you're not editing on mobile. <laughs> so maybe we should switch to something that was shot on mobile or edited on Do you on want mobile. to just go through some of the ones I sent you and then I could tell you which ones, or I can bring or just, up. Yeah, what, what's something? Actually, these are all not from mobile. A lot mobile. of those are. I have, right, I have mobile. Mount Tam. I can, if you guys want to look at my phone, I have mobile stuff here. All right, let's go to your phone then. Sorry. So let's see. Well, before, while we're doing that, one thing I don't know about repeating stuff from before, but we can talk a little bit about shooting on a phone. Um, and we talked a lot about like gear and stuff like that and shooting. So you guys let us know. We're not gonna like go as deep into that because you could look at the last segment, I guess. Um, but if there are specific questions about shooting, um, <laughs> there's a, unanswered calls. Jan's like counts out how many people, how many unanswered calls. Um, but if you guys have questions about shooting on a phone, one thing that Tyson said that was interesting is that he always shoots in portrait, or not in portrait, in horizontal, like landscape mode, mm -hmm. which I think is interesting and, and kind of uncommon. And he had some good reasons for that. Um, I'm gonna one go back thing, and watch this. The reason why we talked a little bit about gear, I think is that what's amazing is mobile phones, the quality is so great. So you don't necessarily need another camera, but um, a lot of times people will bring lots of different cameras with them, but then shoot on their phone, but then maybe like their phone battery dies or um, they run out of storage on their phone, something like that. So I think one thing just to consider and remember is if you do err on the side of shooting your phone more than anything to really optimize for your phone, like have cases that are good for the weather that you're good at, be in if you're shooting underwater, have an underwater case, have a backup. Like if you shoot underwater, maybe have a phone that is just, you're dedicated underwater so it doesn't get destroyed if you're in another country in case something gets messed up. Have backup batteries, have a backup phone potentially. Um, you know, 
and have lenses if you, you know, if you feel limited by the lenses of your camera and really like optimize for that experience. Um, I have a, I have a photo, um, an iPhone photo that I took. If you cool. want to bring up my mobile, here we go. So um, one of the mornings when we were outside of Pondicherry, we caught sunrise at, at the beach and it was like a fishing village. So all these boats and fishermen were coming in like shortly after sunrise with their fresh catch. And this was one of the guys that we or was at the beach. So I took this with my iPhone. This is actually with portrait mode on the iPhone 10. This is the original. And so what I, I so what the two apps that I primarily use when I edit mobile are Snapseed and Visco, or VSCO. And then I use Lightroom occasionally for some color adjustments. Um, but I'm just gonna take you through kind of my process really quickly um, on how I would edit this. I consider this more of like a portrait. And so I, I usually generally take, I only use like my portrait mode for actual like portraits. So yesterday I had talked about cropping a little bit, but I always crop the photo first and the the aspect ratio that i use for um, instagram in particular is five by four so this is a five by four crop um, and i felt like it was just the image itself is a little too far especially if you want to focus on the on the on the, the guy himself so i'm going to crop in just a little bit but i want to kind of maintain the clouds in the background because i think those are beautiful and really unique um, the other thing that I would say is that it's kind of hard to see his face. The other parts of the, of the photo are pretty well exposed. So you kind of have to pick your battles in some ways or maybe find a good balance between the right exposure of trying to show his face, particularly in this photo, and also like not blow out too much of the background. Because when you adjust the brightness, you, as you see like the clouds and the sky get a little more blown out, but now you can see him a lot better versus like the original. So right now the brightness is pretty far up there. Another way to kind of show more of him, because he's he's pretty much in shadows, is to, if you go to the, you can adjust the shadows in a lot of these apps. And so I'm gonna bring up the shadows. And now you can see him a lot more clear too. So there's, there's different techniques that, that I use in particular and that you can use yourself. You can either adjust up in the brightness and that'll just kind of brighten the entire photo or you can adjust the shadows which just adjust like the dark areas of the photo so you can either go negative which makes it darker or positive which brings it a little brighter so i feel like that's a pretty good balance so i usually start in snapseed and then maybe i'll, I'll brighten it a little bit and add a little contrast just so he pops a little bit more and so this is when you the cool thing about editing on mobile is to see the original you just have to hold down the photo and then so this is the original where we started and then this is the cropped version so i'm going to export that really quickly and save it and save it in my oh wait hold on save a new copy okay and then so these are the apps that i use um, for mobile i should have showed this first actually so Snapseed was a, one that I was just in, and then Visco, and then I have Lightroom. So I'm gonna open up Lightroom now, and I'm gonna bring in the photo that I just worked on. Hopefully it's there, there we go. And so what I like to do, particularly in Lightroom, is to adjust the color. So the color is cool because you can really isolate different colors and adjust them. So if I wanted to adjust the blues, like in the netting, and kind of that tarp in the foreground, I would go to the pick the blue, and now I can adjust the hue of the blue, make it purple, make it more cyan, and then adjust the intensity and then also like the brightness. So I'm gonna brighten it up a little bit, and then I'm gonna adjust the red on, in his little kind of scarf. Um, so I'm gonna go to the red, make it pop a little bit more. And then, I mean, if I'm gonna get really picky, I'll, I'll try to see, there's, there's some yellow rope also there. I'm gonna try to bring that out too. Jan is saying that he prefers to edit all photos on the desktop, even iPhone. And I think people have different, you know, you have your different ways that you do stuff. Um, a, lot of, a lot of photographers who 
um, you know, like Tyson are working on the road a lot. And so, um, so they are editing a lot on, on their phone. Um, so it is really nice to work on desktop. We've been really enjoying like, just what well, you'll see when we start getting into the Mount Tam stuff, like I have everything, I, I brought in some photos from um, last night on onto my desktop when I downloaded and then they're like just totally ready to go on mobile so you can keep working. Some things that are interesting on mobile, like Tyson was doing a lot of adjustments, um, like masks and stuff like that, and just being able to use your finger, not rather than having to select different tools, was pretty cool. It's like a, a little more expedient and a little like closer to the subject. So yeah. now this photo, I have it in Visco, and what I like to do in Visco is they have a bunch of filters, like presets that um, you can choose from, and you can download them for free. Um, and what I like to do is I just kind of go, go through each one and I just kind of, I never use the same one all the time, but I kind of go with like what I feel works color wise, works kind of like balance. You can't, I have, I just imported like all of my Visco filters into Lightroom desktop and mm -hmm. mobile. Mm -hmm. Where are they actually on? Like I see, can we like, yeah. Um, Let's see yeah, what. so I mean, as so here, if you go to my screen and then let's find it on mobile because I actually this is like a little bit newer of a thing. Um, but so if we go to Mount Tam from last night for a second, um, there's Mo. Hey, Mo. Um, this is like the Hasselblad, but if you go into edit and then presets, they're all here. Mm -hmm. Um, but, and then let's see, it's kind of confusing to switch on the mobile side. Um, oh, geez. <laughs> oh, oh man, that was bad. That was, it's just little color bars. It's not little color bars. Yeah, no oh, yeah, I was switching. I think I'm like tech supporting myself, but I didn't yeah, prepare. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I didn't prepare right. anyone. Ready, it's set? terrible. Yeah, she likes sparks very right. much. Um, everything exploding. Um, so here's Mount Tam last night. Mm -hmm. Dan and I messing around with his Hasselblads. Um, where was this photo? There's some of these guys. So where yeah. are so these? So at the bottom, mm -hmm. scroll to the right, keep going, and you'll see presets right there. Presets. Yeah. And, and then, then tap where it says um, maybe where it says color right there, and you'll get a pop-up of all of your different sort of categories. Oh. And you'll see all of the Visco ones that you no imported way. on your desktop. So any Visco presets you import on your desktop will be available to you on your phone in Lightroom as well. Dang. Okay, so like Visco mobile presets. That's good to know. Are here. That is cool. Um, all right. So that's fun. Um, because um, it's really nice. The syncing is really nice yeah. and to be able to use those filters um, but while syncing back and forth and yeah. just pulling in, you know, where if you've downloaded your photos to just have them in the folder when you wake yeah. up. Uh, like mm -hmm. we are doing a lot of trips like with the magazine out in the real world and so then if you're out on a boat or something the whole next day but trying to post live, it's really hard if you don't have your computer for your camera images. Um, and so then if I'm out of here, oh, where did I go? Yeah, so for anybody who's watching who hasn't used that, like everything syncs. So if you're using That's Lightroom really CC, cool. mm -hmm. all of your photos, all of your presets, all of the work that you do with them, whatever that might be, will sync back and forth between your computer and your phone and whatever other Let's devices see if you I have. have that. What does it turn? If you turn? No. Is it always totally, it's always vertical? Um, uh, no, there's a. Um, oh, I think my phone's locked. Yeah, you, there you go. So you can turn it horizontally as well. Ooh. Although that's not looking too good on our live stream. Oh yeah, it does weird <laughs> stuff. So I'll but it looks, it works in real it life. It works in real life. Yeah, yeah. The screen didn't like it. Um, the mirroring. So this is fun. Okay. Um, we are all learning about Lightroom together. We're learning. Live well, the presets, in front of you. <laughs> the presets thing so, is pretty neat. Um, 
And it's kind of, I mean, it's kind of like what you said, Emily, you know, it's uh, in, in answer to, um, I can't remember whose who's question or comment it was now, um, about liking to edit on desktop. It's kind of, you know, what works for you? Um, and, and what lets you, you know, most easily get the results that you like? And I mean, what Dan just showed us, um, you know, with uh, adjusting the light first in Snapseed, and then going to Lightroom, and then going to um, Visco, you know, you could do all that within Lightroom. But, mm -hmm. you know, if you have a workflow that works for you, it's really about the results that you're getting. Yeah. No. Do you have to save stuff, or it's just saving? You don't have to save. It's yeah. always just it's saving. It's just always saving. It's always saving. Yeah. All right. And I think, you know, like for, for mobile uh, photography and stuff, um, especially for Instagram, like you don't, I mean, you don't really need to, you, you, you can, but it, all the tools are on your phone that can make a beautiful photo for Instagram and for mobile. Unless you're doing like, I would only, you definitely need to edit in Lightroom for like a desktop or your portfolio site, but for mobile, I think, I think using these apps is, is great. What's up, Rachel? Who's here? This is what we're talking about what Visco stands for. Hmm. We're trying to see the information here on this. We just were playing with this Hasselblad. So Dan, do you want to pull some, some photos or we're going to have this chat and win in a minute, but maybe. Um, how, how much time? Maybe oh let's yeah, just we have less than three minutes. You know, for the next two minutes, let's talk a little bit about shooting. Okay, um, sounds great. Do you have any questions for us about shooting on mobile? Well, so you mentioned you went to Mount Tam last night. You had um, you had real cameras and you had your phone, and you mentioned that you shot with both. Mm -hmm. what, what motivates that decision at any given moment when you have both with you? I usually shoot on Canon, um, and I usually shoot on like a normal lens, like a 50 um, is my default, and because I shoot a lot of people. But if I'm um, so, I'll often have my phone with me like in a place like Tahiti and I'm shooting people and the lifestyle on a Canon and rather, and I shoot prime lenses. I don't usually shoot zoom lenses, so I don't want to change. I don't want like five bodies on me. I'll just like, if I'm going on a boat ride, I'll go out with one lens, like go out on the 50, come back on the 35, uh, maybe like use a long lens, shoot surfing in the middle. Um, but, but then if you want to capture the scene for mo like for Tiny Atlas is travel, travel more than travel lifestyle. Um, so I'll shoot on my phone as well. And the, I'll shoot on my phone for the wider view. Mm. Um, and I'll shoot for people more on on a regular DSLR. What last night is we were shooting on this new Hasselblad um, mirrorless medium format, which was fun. We were trying it out, so getting used to it. So when I needed like just to go faster, I would switch back to my phone because I'm already familiar with it. Um, but that camera is actually like, it's a range finder. And so it, it um, you can't really shoot like people all that close. You can't shoot things that close, like just to have to switch back to that range finder mode. So we were with a group of people and this incredible landscape of Mount Tam. And so with the people, I would probably like default to an iPhone in that setting and then shoot the, <laughs> the landscape more with the Hasselblad, um, but normally it would be the other way. Yeah, I think I think for me, like, I, it just depends what, honestly, what camera I have on me, but if I have, uh, for example, like I would use my, my SLR for definitely like portfolio shots, if I want like a print of something, uh, just because the quality and the resolution are a lot better. For mobile, you know, I take pictures of, I like taking pictures of not just landscapes or people, but like food or like friends and things like that. And I feel like that's that's what I would gravitate towards. I don't need an SLR picture of my of my lunch that Your I tacos. just had or my tacos. We went and had really good tacos. Um, so that's in general like what I use it for. But also, I just like sometimes my phone is just faster and easier access than taking my camera out of my bag. Or if I, it's it's a little more discreet too. If I'm doing like stuff on the street and traveling and I don't want to stand out or don't want to get, draw attention to myself, the phone is really great. And the resolution is pretty decent. You can still make like small prints from it, but. Chatting fireworks, in. all right. Fireworks, chat and win okay. fireworks. Time. time for 80s video game intro. Okay.
Okay, so this is it. Behance.net slash live. Oh, there is a chat window. You chat and type in there, and you are mm. automatically entered to win this awesome prize that Emily's oh. going to tell us all about right now. Mm -hmm. You can type anything you want in the chat. Also, I'm Make it see. something nice. Um, Pick me. So this win. is a notebook <laughs> from this company, Allswell. Um, Your favorite photographer. And there's a right side and a draw side, and the draw side is blank, and the right side is lined. And there's really cool illustrations of travel items by the illustrator Jim Mezzi, which I think I can find for you um, from Tahiti. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm not there. Now I need to, like, switch. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, we still have our fireworks going. We have fireworks, yeah. so you can't see it anyway. There's... Um, there's cool illustrations of travel items, but it's a great journal that has blank and lined sides. And Allswell um, is on Instagram and their site, and they do creative workshops about writing and drawing. And then they also make these notebooks. And we made one with them, so these are look photos of mine. Look how nice Jan is being, too. I don't know if it's Jan or Jan. I, I don't, I don't like, want to mispronounce I've been, I've been saying name. Jan. You would say Jan? Well, I've been saying Jan, but... Is it Jan yeah. or is it... I think it's it Jan. Jan. I think, I think it's Jan because it's Jan. My bad, Jan. I've been, like, saying, I've been saying Jan the whole time. It looks like it's, a good Scandinavian I think it's so. Jan. Yeah. Okay, Jan. Oh, Alexandra! Oh, we have hey, I feel like Alexander. Alexandra's been around all Congratulations, week. Congratulations, Alexandra. Oh, yeah. Do you have one of these notebooks? Congratulations to Alexandra. Coming to you. Awesome. Cool. Cool. Thanks for participating. Yeah. Where, where were we? Oh, wait, let me put in... Can I put in another plug before we going again for the portfolio review? Oh, yeah. Definitely submit links to your portfolios. And again, um, you can do that right above the chat. Uh, you'll see a portfolio review button. Click that, get all the info you need. It's a great opportunity to have Emily and Dan review <laughs> Alexandra's your, review really excited work. that she won. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we don't know what she looks like. She's, <laughs> just, a little, she's just a little <laughs> silhouette. She's a circle. Yeah. The person so. icon. All right. um, also, you guys, let us know, especially people on chat who are communicating with us, let us know what stuff you're, you're interested in, like, on, mm -hmm. um, and also if you have questions for yeah, us. Yeah, ask, like, ask us or, questions. Like, yes. We have another us. hour and a half, guys. Yeah, and I, well, can no, ask, we have... I, can, I can ask questions, but I definitely encourage you guys online to ask questions and tell us what you want to hear about, because yeah. that's the real advantage to tuning in live to something like this, as opposed to just watching yep. a video on YouTube or whatever. Totally. So. Yeah. Um, we are here for you guys. All right. Well, so while we while we uh, while we wait for some questions, are you are you guys ready to um, move into your Mount Tam photos, or are you still you got some other stuff to show from? Uh, Did you want to show more India, or should we? I think. Want to talk about? Let's this? do some editing. Let's do some let's editing. Let's do some editing. On, on mobile. Uh, some mobile. All right. Well, I was still editing that fisherman guy. Oh yeah. Let's put oh, yeah, that. Yeah. Should we go back to that? Um, So this is where we left off. Um, so I just, what I did so far was I just adjusted the brightness and shadows in Snapseed and then adjusted some color in Lightroom. And now I'm in the Visco app and I'm trying to pick a filter that I kind of want to apply. Um, in general, I never apply the filter like full strength just because I feel like it's kind of overkill and it looks a little too like, like just a straight up filter. So I'll just, I'll just pick a different one and then I'll use it maybe like half strength too. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. So let's just go with this one. So if it's full strength, it's at a 12, but I usually, I feel like when you go to 12, see how you lose some of the clouds and the sky behind him and he becomes, it, it's just a little too much contrast for my taste. So I, I'll probably go to like, let's go halfway six and then press okay. And then in the little, this settings, you can, there's more set, all, all mobile photo editing apps have these types of settings where you can adjust the exposure, contrast, brightness, um, shadows. So it's good to kind of get yourself familiar with those things because you can use them. They're, they're pretty universal. Um, and again, I'm going to adjust the shadows just a little bit. I, I'm always curious. So highlights, these will bring back kind of what's a light, white, or kind of blown out already and it'll give it a little bit. See how it kind of, the sky Austin. becomes a little more. Austin Reed chiming in to say hi. What's up, Austin? <laughs> <laughs> He's a buddy of mine. Um, so I'm gonna just, just do this. So you can kind of see the before and then the after. And as you can see, the, di the difference is there's, it's a little more colorful. He stands out and pops a little bit more from the background, but you still get some of the clouds there. 
Um, and then that's pretty much, oh yeah, let's, let's go here too. So this is similar to the, it's exactly the same tool as in Lightroom. I usually do this in Lightroom, but for sake of time, I'm gonna see if I can bring back some of the sky. So the sky has like a blue tone, and I'm gonna to try to darken it just to see if it, it makes any difference in the sky or not. I really see it in the netting. See how it mm -hmm. really brightens it and takes it down. So I really like that. I like the color. I like the colors of the blue with his little kind of white and red scarf, um, and also his expression is kind of. It's, it's like a it's like a morning expression. Uh, <laughs> Don't talk to me yet. Until yeah, I'm a little more chai. But he was really oh, yeah, cool. He just he just kind of stood there. So I feel like I'm gonna adjust this a little bit, just a contrast, just a little bit. And that's it. So this is what I would do. I would export it. Oh, wait. This is including your Lightroom adjustments? And then you went yeah, back this in. is everything. So I export it and then when I post Instagram, I add borders and a lot of, I get this question a lot. Um, so to get kind of the bordered look, I use this app called Square Ready. I'll go back, it's this one on the top right. And then what, it just simply <laughs> adds a square border, that's it. This is also like, in Lightroom you can do this too, right? Yeah, there's, I think Visco you can actually add borders, but I'm just like in this I think you, you can do you can do everything. Dan just likes to use as many apps <laughs> yeah. as possible. Well. So everything Dan's done so far you can do in Lightroom except the borders. Ah, okay. So I just so added Lightroom the borders, borders yeah. and this is when I would say, okay, this is ready to post to Instagram. Oh my God, what if you posted to Instagram? Oh, I posted your... this one already. Oh no, yeah, like, like from you Tam? Post one from Tam. I'll post live. And then you can tell people mm -hmm. to like, go see what's going on. <laughs> Tune in right now. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if that... I don't know why it's blowing it up on the screen. I don't think but... the screen that we're seeing is the correct. Yeah, it doesn't look the same it's as gonna it does look on your phone. Actually. as there we probably go. what. Okay, there we go. That looks so Portrait mode, it's fine, but then when you're showing landscape photos on the photos, it like crops it. So we'll see this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is this is the final, and then the original was this one. So this to this. Right. Yeah. Which is like the changes are are strong. Like they they create, they improve the photo, but they're subtle changes. And that was all, iPhone, or mobile. Should we do one from Tam? Is pay on? <laughs> pay. <laughs> What's up, Faye? What's up, Faye? Um, one thing really quickly, we haven't really heard from people exactly what what you want. Um, people like the borders, Jan. Um, it's just a little bit about shooting Thanks, on a phone, um, just in case people are not messaging. Um, uh, am I on a phone? This is like, um, this is a really basic thing that I talked about in the last one, but I think it's really important just because a lot of people don't know it. So I think you could say it every hour on the hour. Um, when you're shooting, this works. Oh, this in, is a behind the scenes view. Yeah, this is right. a BTS. When you're shooting um, on a phone, an iPhone, the UI looks like this. Um, on a Pixel, it's slightly different, but I think all phones, there's a fair amount of similarity. But if you hold your finger down, um, this is the side. <laughs> they can't see your no like my hand there it, like so if you just oh, press yeah, yeah. and hold um <laughs> I'm like, like confused I'm like, what if, so then you can see this work. that circle or that um yellow square kind of pop up and then there's this um there's a slider <laughs> on the right and that holds your exposure and you can go really bright or dark but it holds it throughout and a lot of people don't know that. And like when we were shooting on Mount Tam, if you're shooting a landscape, the, the camera's gonna try and get the whole scene. But if you're shooting a person in a landscape, the person's probably gonna be really dark. So like if you just click on the people and get them the right exposure. It was interesting though, people have different different ways of doing this. So I'll go back to Dan's, um, maybe go back to Dan's screen and we'll look at some photos from Tam. But um, Tyson, prefers to shoot for sort of the sky in a situation like that, shooting a portrait, but because he doesn't want to lose detail from a sky, so he'll shoot for like the, just making sure he has a little bit of detail in the sky, and then he'll bring the person up later. I, because I'm like primarily a lifestyle photographer, I tend to focus more on 
skin tone and a person. And if this guy's gone, this guy's gone. Thanks for the plug, Jan. What did you Yeah, I was going to say, do you, do you ever shoot? Do you shoot with so, the mobile camera? Yeah, because a lot of apps have their own cameras, mm -hmm. but do you ever open an app to use their camera within the app? No. Or do you know oh, you should be using the camera Let's Lightroom do it. Mobile. Let's do it. Heck, let's see. Heck yeah. I can take pictures of our, we can be meta here. <laughs> All right, let's go Lightroom Mobile. I am really enjoying Lightroom Mobile now that my, it's connected to the correct account. Can camera. I can I show you something on there real quick that you'll never use again after this session, but that'll be useful right now? Oh, is it the... the y you can make uh, a my red tabs. dot. Yes, where are those? Show you guys, you're if you're going to be presenting, yeah. you're going to know yeah. how to so do this now. Where do we do it? Click the back arrow in the upper left. Okay. And click the Lightroom icon there in the upper left and click on, is it general? General. Yeah. And show touches that switch at the bottom. Yeah, I love that. And now you can back out of here. Oh, now the red great. dot will show where everything that I'm dealing with. Where you're touching that. on the screen when you're in when cool. you're in Lightroom. I saw that All on All right, Paisley now, Paisley. oh, my camera's here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I should like, okay. So now we're go. capturing in RAW. Yep, HDR it captures in RAW by default. You can switch and it to JPEG that, if you want, but... Can you lock exposure? Oh, you, you do can. it with a little lock. And you can also swipe left and right for exposure compensation. Oh. Like, just on the image. Wait. Swipe. Cool. Oh, whoa. Nice. Oh, yeah. Uh, you can get full manual if you tap where it says auto to the left of the shutter release. Um, like professional? professional? Professional. Oh, so you can choose... So you can... Do you manual everything in there? Wow. Um, so you can choose ISO, white balance. You can choose Kelvin's, I'm guessing. Oh, no, you can choose tungsten or fluorescent. Is there daylight? Oh, so you can just choose tungsten, like on a camera. Yeah, it looks you, good. I just took a picture of good. Emily. Um, so one of the you might have noticed in the pop up there, there's also high dynamic range. Oh, that's oh, a, I am um, anti HDR. One of the really, <laughs> <laughs> one of the cool things, <laughs> if I may about the HDR in uh, the Lightroom mobile camera is that it saves it as a RAW file. So every other mobile app that shoots HDR saves it as a rendered JPEG, um, but the Lightroom camera actually saves it as, as a RAW. So I'm gonna got, lock uh, this. So now we're locked in on this beautiful exposure of behind the scenes. And what is this, um, and this is the, so yeah, that's oh, that because you have the iPhone. Because you have the iPhone 10, you oh, can yeah. switch between the the wide lens and the tight Look at lens. That. Mm -hmm. Look at the top. <laughs> Do we not want to tell this? All right, that is nice. And the the and bottom then, right icon there yeah. is shoot through presets. So ah. you can pick a, pick a preset that you want to look at while you're shooting. But because all look the editing in Lightroom, I can turn myself Lightroom, totally orange. Yeah, because all the editing in Lightroom is non-destructive, you can always go back and just change it later. And can you, have you put your own edit. presets here for shooting? You can't. Not on the Not yet. Here. Not yet. Okay. I like black and white. You like black and white? Actually, yeah, you don't really need Yeah, that. and so you can you can shoot in black and white, and if you change your mind later, oh, all the color matter. data is there. You can all go right, back so like if I shoot this, now let's go look at it mm -hmm. in my library. So there it is. And mm -hmm. it says DNG. So that's the raw format, digital negative. Digital negative, not. I'm just used to like CR2 or. So that's so CR2 is the Canon proprietary right. raw format. And um, NEF is Nikon. Right. Um, DNG is a. Hasselblad's like HS something right. something. Cool. And then. So just as an example, if you go into color, tap on the color at the bottom there. Yep. And tap on black and white. Uh, it's up at the top. Sort of, on oh. the left there. So even though you shot it in black and white originally, it has, the color. Uh, it has you, all the it color has data in there. Oh, nice. It has all the original data. Those edits are all non-destructive. So. Cool. And, and then you can just pro like so you could you could export it to your camera. Mm -hmm. uh, we can share this. I could share this incredible photo with mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah, in maybe the you should world. post it yeah. to Tiny Outlet. Uh, <laughs> do you do you want to do you want to see a secret like yes. camera feature? So, Everything. Okay. Go back to camera. Do you want to do it on this one? Oh yeah. Do you want I have it? Do, do you want me to? Yeah. You can get a different view. Because I'm already plugged in. Okay. All right. All right, here we go. You okay, get a new here we view. go. I'm going to exit out of the camera. So Lessons um, from Ben. Yeah, right? I like yeah. It. I don't want to like take there this over. Go. Yeah. Well, People tuned in to hear you guys, not me. But. We're the experts on ourselves, but. <laughs> All right. So periodically we have features in Lightroom that aren't quite ready for prime mm -hmm. time, but we will release them for people to look at as a tech preview. Yeah. So if you go back into that preference section by tapping on the Lightroom, uh, logo and mm -hmm. go down to technology previews at the bottom. Oh, cool. 
uh, you'll see Long Exposure is one of Ooh, the tech previews that we currently have available. Nice. Only on iOS at the moment, sorry Android users, but you know, stand by, it'll be there. Um, and we'll go back out and I'll go back into your camera. So now, I also have a long exposure. Cool. Um, Which you just cannot do on though, the phone. Yeah. Anyway. Which you can't do on the phone. So, well, no, okay, what? this is funny. I'm bringing this in from the last one. It's Tyson, we talked about like Gorilla, the um, whatever, the, the tripods, the little mm -hmm. camera tripods. Um, but Tyson also mentioned and showed a photo of himself doing this that in a pinch, you can use your shoe as a tripod. Yeah, and just like, and like use it as a stand. Rest the back yeah. of like your running shoot, like rest the camera there. And he had a, a pretty great picture of himself using his <laughs> shoe as a camera. Whatever works. Tripod. Yeah, I know, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So you, if you want to do, like we stayed, um, a few of us stayed a little bit later as the light was going on Mount Tam. And if I wanted to go shoe tripod, I hate tripods and I've brought them all over the world for jobs. Like when I'm nervous, I bring the tripod and then I hate it, so I don't use it. But I think I might start using this shoe. Well, so the here's shoe here's the thing about the long exposure in Lightroom. So, uh, with the exception of very few Android, like a handful of Android phones, the phones can't actually do long exposure. Like their maximum yeah. actual exposure time so. is <laughs> half a second or yeah. something like that, um, and they can't do long exposure. So mm -hmm. there are apps like Lightroom that simulate long exposure. Right. Um, use it, they do multiple exposures and they do interpolation and so right. on. And so one of the advantages of that is that you don't need a tripod because the stuff that's supposed to be crisp will be crisp. It stays, it, you know, Lightroom just stabilizes it, mm. pulls crisp stuff from one of the photos and the stuff that should be moving, the, the water and the waterfall or whatever will be blurred. Mm. And the other stuff won't And how long set. is the actual exposure? So like the, the actual maximum exposure genuinely that the phone can do mm -hmm. is half a second. Um, <laughs> Tom is back with Snapple Ice Treat. But you can, you can simulate between, <laughs> between half a second and five seconds on him. Okay. So, um, do you want to try one out? Or should we? Mat Mateus Dorado says, hi, people. Hi, Mateus. <laughs> Are you in Brazil? That sounds like a Brazilian name. So. That's gonna take a minute to process. Maybe not a minute, but it's gonna take yeah. a whole bit to do. Janine says cool. that Thanks she had no so idea yeah. Lightroom Mobile was right. that tech savvy, yeah. Um, Adobe is crazy tech savvy. <laughs> <laughs> They're like the cutting edge. We went to Adobe Max. Like, yeah, shooting in RAW is, is really cool. I, I might That's cool. have to reconsider. All right. Yeah, I think Dan, well, Dan, you're like an early yeah, user I, on the phone and so you have like you so when kept I, you like, yeah when the, I first started Instagram at the time when I first started Instagram like, I was I iPhone I was iPhone only for like yeah. the first two years um, so maybe I can what should I do can we I, can I can I take this for a second yeah, yeah. can I show one more thing Just, yes I, if I unplug can I unplug this and yeah. plug it into my phone yeah uh, one sec. Okay, go on. okay. what's on the phone do you have then uh, it's the same okay. same phone I, in iPhone, the meantime iPhone machine learning yeah, I don't know. I lost the thread on the machine learning. Okay. Oh, I th maybe that's about the long exposure. Um, and I think maybe the answer is yes. Javier says, any inexpensive photography gear you can re re recommend? It's my birthday soon. What is your budget? What is inexpensive? And what is gear? Like, are you looking for a camera? Are you looking for, like, lenses or adapters? So give us a little more context for our recommendations. All right, so one last quick thing yeah. from me while we wait for that. So. Here's basically the same shot with just taken regular with the camera. Mm -hmm. Here's the long exposure. I think this was a simulated two second exposure in okay. Lightroom. But this is handheld on a boat bouncing along in the water. You can see the water and the flag are very blurred, but if yeah. we look at the stationary parts like the railing and stuff, it's all still crisp. Hmm. So you can actually shoot this sort of long exposure yeah. stuff without actually having to stabilize your camera with anything. And yeah. so this was shot in, in the Lightroom. Cool. So. Very cool. I like it. I, I mean, I am really enjoying how the Lightroom app is syncing. That is just really cool for me. Getting used to, I have never gotten used to shooting outside of just the native, like on the phone. I've always shot just on the phone. Like I've tried a bunch of different shooting, like shoot through apps and I love a lot of apps for a lot of what they've done, but I haven't been able to like switch well that. one of the I mean one of the advantages <laughs> can we, can we see my thing. phone again I don't know if we can see it. yeah can we see my phone again I mean one of the things that's super hard to beat about the native is that there's that button right yeah. there that gets yeah. you right in you can help a little bit with that 
um, by, by adding a Lightroom widget to the lock screen. So I can mm. just tap that camera to go in there. We'll swipe um, and then tap, right? Swipe and then tap. But that's yeah. much faster. But it's much faster than having to like, open it up, yeah. go find that, blah, 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 blah. That's yeah. a good tip. So. Yeah, I think that, like there's that like tiny we'll, bit we'll of go back like, to dance there's that tiny bit of adrenaline like when you're starting to shoot anything. So yeah. it's like whatever is fastest, yeah, exactly. you go to that. Exactly. But I do think that like as these tools are improving, like especially with Lightroom working with your desktop stuff, um, it's really nice to consolidate, like to be able to take the best of what Visco, you know, Visco has a camera too, um, but I can't separate out the camera yet, but um, being able to pull Visco into Lightroom is kind of nice, I think. Um, um, I can edit a right. photo from last night. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so last, like Emily said, we went to Mount Tam uh, with a group of people. Mount Tam, for those people who don't know, is just nearby over so, the Golden Gate Bridge, or you could show going over the bridge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna edit a photo. Well, let's just, you know what? I'm gonna try to do this all. I'm going Lightroom only, let's see. So Jan, Jan is asking a question about, is Adobe Sensei's computational photography enabling the long exposure feature? Um, I mean, there's no one from I PR or marketing in the room, right? So, I mean, Adobe Sensei is, is, a, is, a, is, that, that's is, is, is a branded name for anything kind of AI that Adobe does. Yeah. So, yes. That's my, that's my answer. Your answer is yes. <laughs> like, I think. That you know that? <laughs> right. Let us know, yeah. Adobe people, if you're watching. <laughs> so this, this is a photo from last night that I took with my iPhone. Um, I think I did zoom in because we were right. quite far and we were on top of this hill. But what I what I what drew me to this photo what were these the rays, the light rays that were coming through, which you can kind of see if you zoom in here. So And this is from the hotspot? This is from the iPhone. This is the iPhone. All I right. zoomed in maybe like three times. Deep. Yeah. So what I would typically do is I mean I mean this is a I like the photo itself as it is, but I really want to focus on the light rays. So again, Crop I would out crop, crop out. I would just see how it looks. I could, whoa, okay. I think I might crop out the hill just so you could really nice. see the rays. Mm. It's cool to see you and Tyson working just in that, since you're so mobile first. Yeah. Both of you guys, like the cropping, like the first thing that they're they're doing every time I'm is cropping. Check that. And it's, it's fun to see. So I got my crop that I like. And the next thing I'm going to do is, I would love to see a little, on the screen you can't really see the, the definition of the trees, but I'm going to try to bring that out so you guys can see that. You think about that for one second. Javier yeah. said anything around $50, just small attachments or tools that can help. In that case, I would assume you're talking about for mobile, um, because it's also mobile day. Um, a couple things we talked about before, there's, how much, what's the name of those, the gorilla, is it gorilla? Gorilla pod tripods? Gorilla pod tripods. Um, I don't know the cost, but they're probably in that range. Um, they're just really small, lightweight. You can like latch them onto stuff. Um, that's a good one if you could get the link for those guys. Um, we also talked about Moment. Uh, there's a number of companies that are, you know, sort of capture camera companies for our phones. Uh, Moment is a company that does um, lenses and cases. This is a moment case and they have their lenses just like screw on to here. Hello, where am I? I have, I'm not getting, like, we're not getting yeah. endorsement dollars, but I have the same one. I oh yeah. As well. yeah. So moment, <laughs> you can screw the lenses onto here. And then they also have a version of this case where, um, I'm like, where am I? Bring it in, Frank. Where there's a battery pack in here. All those battery, anything like battery pack, I feel like it's hot and then that freaks me out. Mm -hmm. But um, but it looks the same as this, but it has a battery and that's a good one. Um, and the lenses themselves are kind of probably around that $50 price point um, from Moment. And there's other companies mm -hmm. that um, sell lenses. Are there other companies you can think of? Lenses that you like? Um, there's a couple of them. I, Moment's the one that Moment's one that really one stands that out. Yeah. Most of us have used. Um, any other accessories that are like for mobile? Mm. That are like fifty dollars birthday presents. Well, those are a few. Those are some good ones. A like case that. also just like water underwater. There's a lot of variety in underwater cases, but there's some that are really basic that still work pretty well. And being able to get a phone 
like where you're not stressed out about it in the water is really nice. And there's ones that are just like, it's basically like a fancy Ziploc bag, but it really works. And then you can, you know, you can go surf or go swim with it. And I like to be in the water and I often miss having my camera if I'm not there. Mm. I can't remember who makes it. I have a little, um, a little flat LED light about the size of a credit card mm. that syncs over Bluetooth with the phone. That's so I can cool. do off camera light when I take pictures of someone. That's I'm just gonna edit what you guys talk Yeah, about. okay, so let's go back to Dan <laughs> um, and tell us what Dan's you're doing. Dan's making magic over here. Yeah. So this is the original, and then these are, these are some of the edits. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm adjusting the color a little bit, I'm adding a little bit. So what I did to get kind of the pink tones is I go to, hold on, let me back out a little bit. Um, if you go to the color, color uh, tool on the bottom, and then you go to mix, and then Usually I click on the orange because there's the orange, the clouds are orange, and then I adjusted the hue on the orange. So see how now they're pink, or you can even go purple, but nothing too extreme. Can can I earn my keep here again? Yeah. For a second? If, if you tap on that little right there, and now you can just tap on the part of the photo that you want to change and move left, right. Oh, that's down. cool. Did you guys get that? That's Ooh, pretty do sweet. Do that again. So then I think there's a, yeah, just tap it again to get so out of that. So there's this little like directional it's center the, tool. It's the targeted adjustment And tool. then you can, mm. wherever you drag your finger, that's the color that it'll adjust for. Oh, so if you're in looking, color if, mix. So maybe. Right, yeah. Right, so if you're looking at that and you're like, well, that's I don't know like if those on clouds Instagram, are orange or red. Or, right, on Instagram, yeah. I, that is really cool. On Instagram, there's like the color that's picker cool. for Instagram story that mm -hmm. you can tap on. But it's nice that you can do it in an actual photography. Like app, because that one's for like text color. And then how That's do I cool get out of it? Just yep. tap it. Okay. Yep. Just tap it again. All right. Nice. Cool. So I kind of have the colors. I'm just gonna go with this. I kind of like this, and then I'm gonna export it. it feels to, very like Pacific Northwest vibe. Even it's the it's trees. Marin. It's, I always I always export the max just because in case I crop tighter or whatnot. Um, and I'm gonna add a filter and visco, even though I know. Hey, you do you. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, if you if you get really close, you can kind of tell the quality because it's it's pretty zoomed in from an iPhone photo. <laughs> it's probably like twenty five percent of the actual photo. That's crazy because we were real far away, you guys, from yeah. those clouds. <laughs> but, I mean, it we looks great like on the screen. We were like a couple hills like. back. <laughs> so let's just pick a filter for the sake of it. I'm going to go with number six. Uh, again, I never use full strength because it just is too drastic. But I'm just going to add a little bit. And then I'm just going to save that. Actually, the trees. Snapseed now. We got to go Snapseed, and then we got to go to Square. Can we, can we need the border. We need the border. Yeah, yeah, I need the border too. Um, I'm going to save this. Do we get into like Instagram? You guys also let us know Square if you want to know any like Instagram -y stuff, or if you just want to know editing. And then I'm going to import our photo that we just edited. Got to upgrade to that paid version of Square. Right? <laughs> Thanks for calling that out. By the way. <laughs> I feel like I got rid of Square Ready because there was something else, um, but I can't remember. So, I, so this is the photo. Um, this is iPhone is cool. zoomed in on the screen. It looks it looks pretty good. What is really cool about Snapseed that um, that I like to do is they have these tools, and it's called the Selective Adjust right here. So the third third tool down on the left side, selective. And what you can do here is you can add little dots and they're intuitive dots. Mm. So at the B stands for brightness, contrast, structure or clarity and saturation. So if I wanted to add and bring out color in the trees, I could literally, and the brightness, and the contrast, I could I could just select part of the photo and adjust that. And this is one of my favorite tools. So like, see these trees are kind of dark, but if you want to emphasize the light coming through the trees, you can kind of brighten it a little bit, which is mm -hmm. kind of cool. Um, so this is something that I use a lot and I feel like this, this, would, like, this would really this industry, help your photos. Yeah. Industry secrets here, you guys. So even just like minor changes make a big difference. And you can, you can control which areas you want to adjust that. Do you have a 3D touch enabled phone? So, I don't know what that means. 
I always like to see the photo in context. So even after Add the Borders, I'll bring it back into Snapseed or an app and just see how it looks and make like minor tweaks if I feel like it's needed. Mm. So I'm just gonna adjust the brightness a little bit. I'm gonna and answer Andrea's brightness. question. So if you go to the, to the widget screen and scroll to the bottom, you'll see a button that says Edit that'll let you uh, add a bunch of other widgets, including the Lightroom widget. Should we try and just do so, that? So yeah, uh, so that's the photo from last night. Here, I'm gonna try and do that for shooting. Shooting, so wait, what do I need to do? Where do I go? Um, you go to the widget screen. So if you're on oh, your lock screen and swipe from the left. Oh, here, so like this? Uh, not from there. Oh, wait. Not from there. So, mm -hmm. like from your lock, yeah, or I don't, I think do it from the lock screen. Lock it down. Like, yeah. Okay. And yep, swipe from the left and scroll to the bottom and hit the edit button. And then you'll see all the ones with the green plus are ones you can add. So there's the Lightroom CC one. Just tap the plus. And then if you scroll up, don't hit done yet, because of course you want to drag Lightroom CC up to the top. Grab the little three handle thing there. Yeah. There you go. And, and, then, then, and then hit done. But then when you open it, it'll go to Lightroom, but then you need to go to camera. So now nope. it's up here. It'll, it'll, you just tap camera and it goes straight into the camera. So you have three options. You can tap camera and it goes straight into the camera, the back camera. Uh -huh. You can tap selfie and it goes straight into the camera, but with the front camera. Nice. Or you can tap last photo and it'll take you into editing whatever photo you were on wow, last. Wow, that's, that's really selfie. cool. Do selfie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> since, since you don't have enough of us, since you don't have enough of us, we want to I love showing my get face. like three <laughs> versions yeah. of our faces yeah. all at the same time. Okay, cool. That's fun. We, we keep giving us the like tips and tricks. Yeah, those are great. Oh yeah, more, Jan, Jan just photos. gave us one too. What if you, you press and hold, if you have the 3D touch or whatever, if you press and hold on the Lightroom icon, oh, you get that pop okay. up as well. But, all right. Yeah. I, I don't know. Try and shoot it in an app. Yeah. <laughs> in my life. All right, should we, what do you guys, we have a little bit more time. We can edit some more photos. Yeah, so we, we have, you guys have 27 minutes left to submit links for your por portfolio review. Okay. Um, I mean, I have other photos from last night or we can do India photos. I'd like I to, can I, and well, yeah, let us, what you, what you, you guys you give us votes, but if, we're, if we don't get any votes in chat, I'd love to see some photos from last night. Has more a photos from last has night. Has a sense of immediacy about it. Yeah. And they're fresher for you. Um, if you bring up my phone, there we go. So, okay, so I'll show you the photos that I, these are selects from last night that are from my Do you make blog. favorites folders on mobile? Or you just I remember? Don't. I just. You just like. Yeah, so or this you, is. Or you exported it to your phone. Here's Tyson. Oh yeah, do you gotta edit Tyson? Here's Emily. Oh geez, a little under don't edit me. <laughs> <laughs> So this is, uh, this is from last night, and this is actually our friend Ben standing there taking pictures. So if I were to edit this, I would probably take out these three girls' heads that are oh sitting over the hill. We did this with Tyson, and he did the same photo, mm -hmm. like a really similar photo, but then he it was a picture of you, and then Ben was in the background in the girls, and so he took out Ben, but he kept in the girls. There's Ben, so I get the resolution on the hustle blog. This it's is like so zoomed in, it's zoomed insane. In. Anyways, okay. All right. And then I'd have one more. This is from, uh, we made a quick stop just across the bridge. Nice. See, these are the eight photos I did. That you took from the, from the Hassie. Let's do Tyson's face. Yeah, let's see, let's see, edit a, a person. All right. That'd be cool. Let's go to Lightroom. Um, add Tyson. There he is. So again, there's, I think this is the original aspect ratio. I'm going to edit it as if I would be going to the five by four. Have you ever shot on a 4x5? No, Pretty I have fun. not. I have one. You can borrow it. <laughs> do I? Oh, there we go. Although, it's hard to not have Polaroid okay. um, anymore before I have. Um, so this was like right when the sun was coming down and the light was beautiful. Um, let's go to light. Where's the light? There we go. So if you go to the light tab, you can adjust all your exposure contrast highlights shadows um and i you know sometimes i just i'll just experiment you know it's, it's some of it's personal preference some of it is what you're really trying to show but i like to just mess around with the tools and that's interesting it's something. interesting for me to hear because tyson similar like there was a photo that he was looking at that was like the color got kind of weird 
and rather than trying to correct it, he was just like leaning into the weirdness and mm. and um, being very like playful with that. And um, it's interesting to see that like accounts that are, you know, really big. That part of it I think is like coming from just like openness to playing yeah. and not yeah. expecting something to be a certain way and just being open to like what is the best picture what is and don't you know, don't just, don't fight the photo yeah just yeah, like really picture. creative yeah. expression really joy and just creativity and i think a lot of people are using you know not a lot of people but millions and millions of people are using instagram as a as a work tool too and and people who use it for work and for fun it sort of takes some of the fun um, out, um, but just to sort of remember to, to be able to have fun with it, I think it's really nice. Let's yeah, see. so I, I made a few adjustments and I think I think you just gotta be curious and be, a lot of it's trial and error, this is how I kind of learned. So this is the original, and on the screen it looks a lot darker than on, on my phone, but um, this is the original and then this is the edited version so far. So yeah, I just made some, these are some minor just lighting adjustments and um, what I'll do next is I would just, I would save that. Yeah, I have to say it does look a lot better on your phone. He looks, yeah. he, he looks, looks pretty, he looks pretty pink on, on, yeah. on the internet. So <laughs> I'm going to, I'm going to edit for what you guys are seeing. So gonna, is this uh, accurate to what they're seeing that screen? Yeah. I think probably like Okay, this, so yeah, it's much more. Dark. It's much darker. Yeah. Um, so dark. I'm going to, I'm going to edit what you guys are seeing. Yeah. Okay. You want to watch this one then? Yeah. Dan? Okay. Actually, it looks it looks good on it looks good on okay. your screen. All right. Maybe just do um, a little less. Yeah. I'm just so. I mean, it depends on what you like, but his skin tone because of the light is very orange pink. So I'm gonna go to the color, and then go to the orange, and then you can adjust actually the tonal range. So see how he becomes less warm and a little more yellow, or you can adjust the saturation and make it not as not as strong. So now it looks more natural, or his skin looks at least. It, this is just oh, a little delay. There's a little okay. time lag, but yeah. And Eric so, says you guys are inspiring me to go take more photos. That is awesome. Yeah, that's, that's what exactly we want to hear. What I think we want. the best thing that's we can hear. That's the thing yeah. with like Tiny Atlas too, just in general, is like just a real excitement around. So just this capturing is the. World. I'm gonna go back to the original. Show you guys. This is the original. And like wherever you are in the world. And then this is there's the, stuff that's so interesting looks, and good. So his skin looks more natural now yeah. versus so like orange and pink. So I'm gonna just save that. Oh great, that selfie's like staring me in the face. <laughs> uh, wait, is that how? Uh, there we go. Oh wait, how do I go back to the photos? There we go. Okay, cool. Do I need to do this? All right, I'm gonna save it to my camera roll. Maybe we should edit a picture of you together. No, let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> Force you to edit a self-portrait. Cool, and then I'm gonna, I'm actually I'll bring it into Visco. Sorry, I'm just reliant on the Visco filters here. Uh, look at that face, so friendly. Uh, <laughs> And I'll just pick one. Again, I think I think it adds a little too much contrast, so I'm just gonna go slightly with the filter. Adjust the exposure, add a little bit of the exposure, and then see if I can bring out some more details in the in the background. Yeah, I like that. One thing that we brought up before that I think is a good thing to remember is also with like a lot of us are based on reality too and with so much photography, not with conceptual photography or fine art, but in a lot of travel photography, especially um, like just being in the right place at the right time is really important. And so this was so not relying on editing to change everything, but you know, we, we went like we left here and we went straight to Marin and then we also had a little bit of time before the sun was actually gonna go down and we're like, do we do something else? And I was like, no, let's go so that we have time and like you have time to like look around and figure out what you wanna do. And if you give yourself like, you do the planning, you actually go for it, you have a friend come and you just go 
you know, do that little bit of production and then go take pictures, of, I think, if you're gonna be excited about about what you see. And then you go in and you like improve upon what you've got in Lightroom and, and on your 25 apps. And then, you know, and but I think just taking the time, like giving yourself the time to be creative is really important. And, um, and then like planning around it and doing what you can to optimize it. And then you do like the final bit on the editing side. But I think for, for everything in travel, it's so much about like showing up for it, waking up for sunrise, bringing someone, you know, bringing a friend, learning the local language, even if it's just a word or two to say thank you. Like there's a lot that you do before you take pictures. So you guys went last night to Mount Tammy at this beautiful sunset. If you'd gotten there and it had been totally fogged in, um, would you have gone home? Or can you talk about how that would change the photography that you would attempt while you were while you were there? Would it be sure? Well, we were another photographer that we were with, um, Eric Einmiller. Ein Ein yeah. Um, he was like, we came up through fog. You know that mm. fog that you see below. We drove up through it, and so people were like, oh no, you know. So there would be like a little bit of a disappointment, but. You also figure out just what's there, you know, location photographers, travel photographers, you just shoot what's there. And so he was like, okay, so I was like planning for like foggy portraits and, you know, so he started walking through his mind, but even like he's like a professional photographer now, right? So he's like going into production mode. Like if this is my new set of circumstances, what is plan B? You know, like what am I going to shoot in that scenario to like maximize the light in the group of people and the time that he had like given himself after work to like run up and like be creative with us. So he was like doing that little bit of production and then he got above the clouds and it was amazing. But um, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't, we definitely wouldn't have gone home. Yeah, I, I, we I rarely. We spent a little I, more yeah. time drinking the beers <laughs> that Eric brought, but um, instead I didn't of just drink any running. Beers, by the way. Um, yeah, Dan's not drinking beers. Yeah, I would, I would definitely uh, second that, and I think um, you just kind of work with what you have, because like, like Emily alluded to yesterday, and also just now, the weather's outside of your control, and yeah, just you can do research, you can kind of, you know, actually scout and see what's what it's going to be like, but. When you have a group of friends and you're at a beautiful location, regardless, you're gonna get you're gonna get good pictures no matter what. Um, so yeah, it would have been different. Like there wouldn't have been as much light or sunlight, but you could take great portraits. You can. It's it's a different mood that you would this get. This is something funny. If you want to go to be like I, so we have this. Dan and I are both trying out this Hasselblad and on my computer like there's so much information because it's a it's a hundred meg file which is just like it kind of just makes me like oh my god where are you gonna put all this can we photos? look at emily's phone do you want to show um, your phone yeah that... you show my phone but it's interesting in that like just mobile is also so connected to the device so these pictures are kind of like they're beautiful and there's some that are really beautiful, but it's also there's so much information and then to squash it down <laughs> to this small is a little bit like, <laughs> like it's almost like too much information and makes it seem like too crisp or something for me. It does make it nice to edit because there's so much but data there's a there. Lot there. You can you can really get uh, down to the nitty gritty. And then like, like how, if I wanna like get, do you pinch here? Uh, if you wanna zoom one to one, you can just double tap right on it or you can do a pinch zoom. Okay. Yeah, that's insane. Well, this, I was trying to like, with cameras that have a ton of resolution, I often try and like, like minimize it. So bring the, like I was shooting, I think as um, opened up as I could, which mm. in this camera I think is only four or five. So there's like- For a shallower depth of field? Yeah, like okay. I want less information in a huge landscape so that I can focus on sort of whatever it is that I'm interested we in. We got a question. Oh, um, Janice, I, Janice Haynes says, I'm a Girl Scout leader for juniors. They really want to yeah. learn how to take better pictures with our five steps for kids. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Um, Maybe you can speak because you have a, I have, a son yourself. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that, <laughs> I love that structure too. Like, I think Just that's actually steps. really helpful. Five steps. All right, well, there's <laughs> one step, um, which is the most important one, um, is to know what you're taking a picture of. So that seems like really crazy obvious, but I would challenge that most people who are taking pictures most of the time don't know what they're taking a picture of. They're like, oh, there's a sunset and they're taking a picture, but it's like, 
What are you taking a picture of? Are you taking a picture of the light on your friend's face as the sun is setting? Are you taking a picture of the light on the hill? Are you taking a picture of the sky? Like what about the sunset are you taking a picture of? So I think that is like number one. And then um, number two would be having a tool that you can use. So if you have Girl Scouts, um, like what cameras are these kids um, able to have and comfortable with. Like if they're all kids that are used to like, if are they're fourth and fifth graders, they're like on the border of like, do you give them their own phones? Like I feel like middle school is sort of like when they start getting their own phones. Um, are they shooting on their phone? Are they shooting cameras? So making sure that they have things that they're comfortable with. I do feel like learning on, there is a lot of love for analog photography right now with young people. Um, these are very young people. Um, but you learn a lot and quickly with film and film cameras are actually really inexpensive now like really good um, 35 millimeter SLR cameras are like you can get them for like $50 or $100 and then you have to pay for like film and processing but you can go to like a I don't know like a Costco or whatever I think and get kind of lo-fi processing for really cheap but to actually learn how a camera works teaches you so much about photography because it's not easy. Um, and I think young people could be either really excited about it or frustrated. Like my son is younger than that and I've taken him to the dark room and he had a lot of fun in the dark room but then he's used to digital cameras so a little bit like frustrated with, like he wants to see the screen. Um, so, but understanding the basics of photography is really, really helpful. Um, and knowing what you want to take a picture of. And then, um, what else would you say? That's a tough on? question. Um, I, I, can, I can make something up if, yeah. what, you, what you think if you want. I would say like one thing that can be really handy, and, and for, for anyone, not necessarily even just kids, mm -hmm. is um, give them a very specific project. Mm -hmm. Narrow their options. Mm -hmm. So when, when it's kind of like, go take pictures, and it's this big kind of greenfield thing, that can be a little bit yeah. overwhelming and a little bit hard to focus or bring creativity to bear on that. If you give them a much more directed kind of project, um, that can really start the gears going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, giving them parameters of yeah, like, yeah. Think, what's or like a on. little assignment. Yeah. Um, I mean, and then, co I mean, composition um, is sort of like number one thing. I mean, our world, um, you know, a camera really codifies the world and, into this shape and um, you know just the picture plane, the rectangle that you have, um, all of a sudden puts the world that is borderless into a rigid form. And so photography, like our brains are um, optimized to recognize shapes um, in general. And then photography itself is a shape. And so, sort of teaching people a little bit about how, like what is there and what they're seeing. So are the lines lined up? And, and but not to give them um, a judgment about if everything should be lined up. Like you don't want to tell a bunch of fourth and fifth graders that everything needs to be straight, but so that they notice, like ask the question, like are the lines straight in this picture? And if they're not straight, do you like that they're not straight or do you like that they're straight? And then, and having like photographers listen to themselves and decide for themselves like what they're liking about what they're seeing. I think, um, yeah, and, and I think other things to pay attention to that you can teach them what to look out for is like, did, like colors, like pay attention mm -hmm. to what you see, like colors, like is this red, green, and blue? Like why did you take it? Textures, is it smooth, is it sharp, is it Well, So, all right, so what do we have? First of all, what are you taking a picture of? What are you taking a picture of? What, do you have a camera mm -hmm. that, that you know how, that you can use? Yeah. And then composition, color, and then have an assignment. That was fun. And, and, and Give have yourself them, a little mini project. Can we have them critique each other's assignments too? I feel like it's really valuable to hear like, talk other people. Yeah, yourself. talk amongst yeah. yourselves nicely, maybe fourth <laughs> and fifth graders. I don't know. I, I, I think you know, I, uh, other people's perspectives on my photos are always really illuminating. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Cool.
All right, wait, where are we? We have a few more we minutes. Have, we have uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, let's, add, let's do a little bit more right, editing. We've we got 10 minutes. Right. You have 10 minutes left. I feel like you should give us portfolio. more secrets to Lightroom Mobile. I'm back up here. Or You know what, Dan? All right. Well, this is, you, you're all, you're the gradient guy. <laughs> the, Dan's so Ty, gradient guy, Tom. Tyson was like using it, but he had, it was like on the side. I don't, I don't usually do a ton of editing. Um, but so where is the gradient on here? Oh, you're asking me. Um, so it's uh, in selective. It's the bottom left corner right now. Okay. And then in the top le uh, left, you'll see that plus sign. And so now you can choose a freeform brush, a uh -huh. radial gradient, or a linear gradient. Um, so what do I want? So you want you, the gradient? It's this one. The linear gradient. And there. then now you can drag. There you go. So what are you doing when you're doing? You're um, you're setting what it's gonna, what the gradient is actually gonna affect, like okay. where the red is, and then you can adjust what you want. Like you can adjust the light with it. With so if you want. Wait. Oh, because you went side to side, so you're making it brighter over there? Hold on. So you don't within want the gradient like, tool, then like you would, would do go the sky to... to no, you did it right. You're oh, I did right. it? So and then going you... to light, just like crank it all the way out so we'll really see something. There you oh, go. Oh, yeah, because you did it like to the yep. side. Yeah, because I did the sideways gradient. Mm -hmm. Which is what I thought you wanted because so it looks kind of vignetted. I don't know if that's on purpose. That's, no, it was just like naturally like that. But so like, what about the sky? And then like, if you wanted the sky to be lighter or darker, yeah. do I need to like, oh, because this is the red. So the red right. is the so part the red that's is showing be you the part that will it. be affected by the adjustment. And, and right so now then your here... lines are spread out. So it's, it's a gradual, it's more gradual. Ah. If you want it to be more drastic or then you would, you yeah, you would just it. pinch it. So if you want it just to be in there and, yeah. and then it's like. That's cool. It's exactly like desktop. That's fun. And then but, and the other ones do what? Uh, so the, the one in the middle is the radial gradient. So it's a gradient just like what you're using now, but instead of being in a line, it's in a, it's in a circle. Oh, so like if you wanted to like yeah. pop them in. Like on. maybe, yeah, maybe the most common case would be like you want to do like right. sort of an off-center vignette or something right. where you want to highlight something somewhere in the frame. And then, and then what's that's, the brush? And the brush like, is a freeform brush. So that's like just, with your finger. Yep, so you can just brush with your finger right on the image wherever you want. Yeah. So okay. if you wanted to brighten up the edges and do it with your finger. And then you go like that. I don't know. That was everything. Maybe I didn't actually select the brush. It looks like you did. Oh, there's, sure. these are, and these are different brushes? Yeah, so uh, one, you're, you're changing, the, so the one on the top left, you're changing, so you, don't tap it. Press and hold okay. and go up and down. You're that's the brush size. So move up your finger up and down. Oh. So you're changing your brush size. And then, so you can release there. Go down to the second one there. Again, press and hold and go up and down. That's feather, the hardness of the edge. Oh, so you want like, wh so which you, way is so harder? So you can see at the top, uh, feather 100%, that's the top. Go down, 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 down. Keep going down, down, and down, And that's down, soft, down. that's making it softer? That's making it harder. Oh, harder, 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 okay, harder. so we want yeah. it like really soft. Yeah. Yeah. Do you want 100% soft or like? Yeah, this is your 100, just okay. so you can see it on the screen. And, then, um, and the last one is flow, so that's kind of like how quickly are you painting it on. It behaves sort of, like if you set it below 100, mm -hmm. it behaves sort of like an airbrush. So as you paint over the same area again, mm -hmm. the, it builds up. And then this is like it happens right away? Well, the opposite. So oh, okay. uh, up, up top is it happens right away, and okay. down low is it builds up let's gradually do, as you paint it. Higher. 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 Yeah. Okay. And then. You can and just, then paint, just paint, on, on paint with your finger where you want to adjust. Yeah, and then <laughs> now what, after you made your brush mark, you can adjust all that stuff, the exposure, the contrast. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Oh, and you can see better when it gets dark because you just made it bright before. Yeah. So you can see what's can, happening and then and contrast. You can use any one of those. And if your goal here was actually just to correct that vignetting, there's also... Like a reverse vignette? Well, there's probably a lens profile for this Hasselblad camera. So you could just actually, mm -hmm. bottom, there's... Well, I'll let you get it. Yeah, I'll let we'll, you finish we'll just, with this first. But there's, you I can mean, just apply a lens profile to it. Where, okay, it. where's that? Let's go for it. Um, so just go ahead and click the checkbox check. in the lower right to confirm I mean, those changes. This weird, but we're just going with it. Yeah, and those controls at the bottom scroll kind of off to the... To the right, yeah. So optics, right there, and oh, turn right. on uh, enable, enable lens, lens corrections. corrections. 
and I didn't see that do much. I don't yeah. know if it looked like it did anything. I mean, I think it's like also naturally the world is vignetting at sunset, right? Um, so. Yeah, so either either there's not much to correct there or maybe there's not actually a profile for the for that particular lens. And sure. then you could like go into your crazy pre presets, visco yep. stuff in here right now. Oh, this is JPEG, but... You can control the oh, intensity. Oh, because these are JPEGs. Those, right? These are, I brought in JPEG. Can you control the intensity on the, those filters? Too? Oh, let's see. No. Uh, no, you can control the intensity on. No! <laughs> <laughs> um, on profiles, which are in a separate section, which we can talk okay. about if you want. But yeah. That's cool. going deep. Do you want to pick a filter? Is that the one? That's the I one. I picked one. I mean, that's it. Here's, there it is. That's the pathway. Um, and now Emily's going to post it and on now Instagram. I'm going to post it. No, I'm not. I posted <laughs> a photo this morning. Well, it's funny. Like, the, so I like, saw the Tiny Atlas post. The morning. Tiny Atlas post was from my phone, and then these are like the way are fancier the... Hasselblad pictures, but um, look at how crazy modified that is. Here's our, there's Eric who brought the beers. Thanks, Eric. You're watching at your desk, <laughs> probably yeah, not. Yeah, yours, yours is like much more vignetted than mine. Oh, do you think it was the lens? It might be the lens. We had we had different lenses last night. Mm -hmm. Do people have, I'm starting to see a pattern. Oh, 49 missed calls, you're seeing what's going on. I don't know, look <laughs> at the emails though, look at the email situation. Oh yeah, you got four and a half thousand emails. Four thousand, like it's just, oh, I don't know. you might as well life, just mark guys. those as red and move on. I have, Should we go uh, to have, Instagram for a second? Too. Do you guys have, we have three minutes, should we do any like little Instagram conversation? People, well yeah, so this was like, going back to just like what you feel comfortable on. So like I'm really fast on a Canon, I'm fast on like me certain media format. This is camera that was the first time I've ever used it, so it was like slower for me. And so this picture, which people liked a lot, um, was just a phone photo, like one second, boom. <laughs> and then I think I just added it on my phone. Um, what else? What else about? Uh, we were talking like about with editing, you know, when you're editing for Instagram, you know, we talked about this yesterday with like the pop, like you, you might modify a file versus how you would put it in your portfolio, which we're gonna start talking about in a few mm -hmm. minutes. Like your portfolio, I feel like you, you wanna really have the images look how they would look for a client that um, would hire you if you're a photographer in this case, or if it's just a creative portfolio, like just what you want them to look like. But I think everything is kind of slightly different when you're editing for Instagram because um, it's so small when you see it at first. Um, and maybe we should go just to look at like back to the feed a little bit and we could look at Dan's feed too, um, just for another minute or two. Um, maybe do mine and then we'll do Dan's, but just seeing like on mobile when these pictures get so small, um, you want to have a lot of impact or, you know, like Tyson feels stressed to like not be able to put what he wants and I think with Tiny Atlas 2 on the Instagram, we want people to like the pictures because if we're telling them something, we want them to see it. And the more people like a picture, the more people will actually see that post. So it's kind of a weird thing. But if there's a picture that you feel passionately about, I think it's important to just, and you, you're used to sharing your photos and you think, oh, this photo is not gonna do well, but I think this is the best photo I've ever taken. Like, by all means, just share that. Like, and I think Dan's work in India really speaks to that. Like. He's really well known for landscapes, but he loves lots of types of photography and really loves portraits. And so he made an effort to, to put those images on there, even though his audience wasn't necessarily going to like them as much. And, and I think you sort of like retrained your audience to know that you like people and that mm -hmm. you like pi people yeah. pictures mm -hmm. and they're definitely engaging more with your people pictures. And, and you should feel, you know, on the one hand, it's good to know, like it's good to understand how Instagram works it's good to know that like vertical photos are gonna do better because people, they're bigger, they can see them better. There's just more of the photo there. But on the other hand, if you have a horizontal crop of something that you love, like by all means, put it there. Like it's good to know the constraints and then be able to make choices about breaking the rules of like what does well, but while understanding the rules and not be like disappointed if something isn't doing as well when it's like a very small horizontal photo with a border on it like you know that it's going to be harder for it to do well but if you love it that's fine like share it 
Um, and so things are small. Graphic images work well. And like, here's an example of a picture. This is our friend, Michael Henry, who is a cook and a photographer. And he was in Portugal. And I loved this photo and I asked him to send it to me. And it's dark. I think it's beautiful and contrasty. Um, but it's dark, it's stormy, it's horizontal, and it just didn't do as well as our other photos, but like, I didn't care because I just thought it was a, a unique take. And for Tiny Atlas, I want to show like a broader picture of travel and not just always a sunny day and not a world without people. Like we're making decisions. You're making decisions when you're showing work about your creative view, or in my case, like with Tiny Atlas, we're making decisions about like the brand's view in worldview every time you're sharing a photo. So, um, Do you select all the photos that post on Tiny Atlas? I do, mostly, unless I'm on vacation, and then mm. Lindsay does. <laughs> I would like to do less of it. But I, I, but I do like it, because it's like we have a real community of people um, that we're connected to, and so um, every once in a while I don't, but most of the time I do. Um, is it portfolio time? It is portfolio yeah, time. Cool. Right. Yeah, cool. Yeah. You guys ready for that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We're doing two, right? We're going to do two. And you guys, someone in the Adobe world, like you guys over here? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So are we, is there like a fancy intro? There is. Just let them know we're going to space. Shh. Oh yeah, and we're going to wear helmets, space oh. helmets for some reason. Oh wait. I don't really know so why, wait. but I'm in. Do we have, space. are we? Tell them we're going to space. We're going to okay. space right now. Q space. You guys just did this to make fun of us. Can we? They're just messing with us. Yeah, can we just bang our heads together for the next 20 minutes? And yeah. Ooh. I like this. Ooh. Oh, shoot. I'm trying to pretend that I'm floating. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't do this. All right. So <sighs> Emily's losing hers. I'm sorry. What, what I'm, I'm doing my other. I'm, I'm doing I'm my space. Mine. You're going to keep it? I'm, I'm doing mine. space cowboy. Okay. Do I, do I sound like super echoey now? I do to me? No. Okay. I can't do it. <laughs> um, I'm okay. I, I, I can write solo too if you want to take yours off. No, no, no. I'm, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Let's, take a look at, <laughs> let's take a look at some portfolios. Nice. Um, so I have, I, I have one up on my uh, computer here. There we go. Cool. Um, and this is um, Chris. I think this is from Chris. Sorry, what was the? Animal Collections? Uh, Chris Ace. Chris Ace. This is from Oh, Chris, Chris has been with us this a bunch, Chris yeah. Ace. Um, Chris, are you there? Did is you Chris remember online? Is Chris our questions chatting? about what you want from us about review? And you guys can just go too if you want. Do you want me to? You, t you tell me what you want. Yeah, can, can we scroll? Uh, can we and scroll? We take a look at what's here. Yeah, let's let's go through everything that's on the site real quick. Let's do like a really quick overview of the whole site and okay. go into the sections, and then we'll see. Okay. What's presets? Preset? Are you I guess selling he sells presets? presets. Ah, okay. So this is. If this is a preset site or is this a portfolio? Okay, so that was a few, and then I've got, uh, probably I can click into stuff here, right? Photo. Grad photos, mm -hmm. Moscow, three amigos. Where, yeah, where do you, should I just go left to right? Where do you guys want to start? Well, no, so let's go to the, all the sections, and then what's- Is it just those four? Uh, or is those? Uh, let me, let me. I think it's just four. I think it's those four. Let me, but yep, no, yeah. just from the home, from the top screen. So oh, up here, presets. you want to go see here? Is this what you want? Presets we saw, right? No, that was the home oh, no. page. Okay, so what's presets? Pacific Collection Lightroom presets were created to withstand time. Coming soon? Okay. Coming soon. Ooh, I'm going to have to do like a back here, I think. I'm confused though, because on the home page, he had like presets. Maybe they're freebies. It's like a new one. Free Lightroom presets? What is freebies? Mm -hmm. What okay. happens if free Lightroom presets? Oh, there you go. Wow. All right. Okay. Info and cart. Do you want to? Uh, All right. So yeah. this is, what does it say about? It's general. It says my name is Chris with no H. I Chris with no H. editing, traveling, meeting new people, being behind the camera, pricing. Okay. All right. So let's go into let's go photos. Photos. Photo. 
Yeah, I get it. And let's go to grad photos. One thing with like the whole presets thing, I think that um, like Tyson doesn't use any presets and I think um, I think presets are really nice. They're a really nice shortcut and they're a nice way to make a consistent looking feed, which Instagram rewards consistency more than anything. Um, but it's also like an easy thing for people to think like, okay, now I'm done. Like I have a preset, I'm good. Um, but like if, if Chris has like created these presets for himself, then they like work really well for him, but then for someone else to just acquire them, I think it's good to be thinking about also like just what you want your work to look like and then mm -hmm. modifying presets or like coming up with your own reasoning for doing stuff. Yeah, I've, I I've really bought important. presets, but only for, from friends out of support. Um, and I think sometimes presets is a good way to start but maybe not just paste the same preset over every single photo and then call it a day, like Emily said. I think there's, I think there's a lot to post-production and editing that you can really kind of um, find your own unique style, and I think that'll also help you in the long run kind of stand out and, and have people hire you for a specific look or for specific types of, types of photos. So are these people have just graduated from college? Undergraduate? Um, Tiger Training School. Tiger training school? I don't know, I'm just looking at the flag. <laughs> They're graduating, whatever they are. I'm feeling college graduation. The one yeah. thing I, I noticed on this site and versus other portfolio sites right off the bat is the photos are, are really big. Mm -hmm. um, and that's I think that's a preference thing. But I will say that it really, it's gonna be tougher to view all of them unless you keep scrolling a lot. Right. Um, on, on my screen, I can't see the whole photo. Yeah, once. and right. that, and that's the other part too. I think maybe I would, go down in size just a bit so it's easier to see the whole photo and at once at once at least yeah. like the first photo yeah in, oh. a, in a section cool we'll go, we'll let's see the, the next, next one here. yeah right. moscow indiana that is a really nice portrait yeah this was the one uh, this first one on the, the home page yeah home page mm -hmm. i like that like should we talk talk yeah. a little bit about stop me whenever you want yeah. just why this is a nice portrait one yeah. thing that Tyson brought up that I think we talked about already is just like taking a photo that's uniquely your, yours that somebody else couldn't have taken and this is clearly like it's a person you know and you're having like a, a moment like photo moment with this person and um, just doing exactly what you felt like doing and and it feels like that and and people love to see things they haven't seen before and so everyone has the possibility of showing sort of an endless amount of things. Um, every photographer has that like ability to show an endless amount of new things to people, but it's hard to feel confident to just show new, new, just your own vision. But I think as close as you can get to understanding what you're taking a picture of, um, really, really helps. So this is like, it's very clear that it's a portrait. One of the reasons it's clear is there's like a shallow depth of field and um, and then there's a strong color, which is obviously something that's important to Chris. Um, and then there's like really nice connection and um, personal details. So yeah, I think it's a really nice portrait. Yeah, I like the portrait a lot too. I like the uh, grittiness of the surroundings on these mm -hmm. portraits as well. I like, we looked at some other por portfolios the last hour and um, one of them had a lot of like design elements and it was really distracting and this, this is another, uh, an example of one that's not. Like there's just white space and photos and I think for anyone who's actually trying to be, you know, work professionally as a photographer or share mm -hmm. work in a professional way, least amount of distractions to the photos the best you know which is kind of why we're saying actually bring these like the ones that are really big slightly smaller because it's uh, distracting to not being able to see like the whole photo so just as 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 quickly and as simply as you can share photos on a portfolio especially if you're trying to get work and ha as clear of like what you want i think it. i think from an editing perspective too it's he's he's been really consistent with mm -hmm. like the colors kind of like the grittiness like Ben was, was talking about and I can kind of get a sense for the type of photography that he he likes to shoot, mm -hmm. at least portrait wise for sure. Yeah, and like the skin, like it's like 
it's a real person. There's, you know, there's color work that's been done, but you're getting a real sense of skin, um, which is nice. Like these aren't like. What's your thought about showing like the same person for this entire section versus like it's... mixing it up with maybe another portrait of someone else? I think it's like, it's like a story about her. It's kind of like a fashion story, so I don't care. Mm -hmm. If it was like a, a section that said portraits, I wouldn't want to see like 12 portraits of the same girl in the laundromat, but um, which has been revealed in the end, is that's where she is. Um, I don't know if I want to know that. I feel like, uh, I feel like I don't know if I need to know that she's in the laundromat. Um, like they're such simple portraits, so. The last ones, I maybe like keep the mystery and not show. But yeah, if you're, you know, if you're doing a set of portraits, you would want a lot of people. But this just seems sort of like a little mini fashion portrait mm -hmm. shoot. What's the next one? I like that you can just get to the next section at the bottom. It's nice. Three amigos. Are they three amigos? We'll see. Yeah, you see how it's like the photos are so big it's hard to see. Yeah, it's hard to it's hard to get a sense of I think like that's probably the biggest critique I would have. The picture is. It's just the mm -hmm. size. Yeah, the I want to see them all at once. If yeah. I just scroll up and down really fast. Not the, if you that, resize that your browser, do they will they fit in if you make your browser slightly smaller? Um, yeah, no. actually they would scale. You can see a little do, bit more. Do. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Still everyone. The Behind the curtain. You can maybe do command minus and plus so you can mm -hmm. squeeze it in and out of the browser. Just keep pressing minus, yeah. And then you can open it up. There you Almost go. there. You can Almost. open up the browser now. I can open up the browser again. Or, yeah. Well, there you go. There we go. Okay. So this is 25%. Yeah. <laughs> Make those photos right. a little smaller. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's much better. Much easier to see that. Okay. Okay. And it's nice. I mean, I've I've occasionally looked at sites where the I, mean, I don't know anything about making web pages, but where the photo fits on the screen, but you click it and you can get like a hundred percent view or whatever. Mm -hmm. and you click out again to go back to the fit view. It's yeah. nice. Mm -hmm. So you can give people the option to see, you know, if they want to look in on a detail, but but otherwise, see the whole picture at once. Yeah. I like the colors. Well, I'm going to go back up here. Okay. There we go. Are there more? Okay. Here, can I have like more muted highlights and kind of the colors. And there's like, yeah, the skies are like, yeah, have that like. really gray. Creamy whites. <laughs> oh, four amigos. Cool. I like that we were talking about like not, somebody else had like a lot of photos and he's got like pretty tight, like there's not a lot of photos, but what that is from a photo editor's perspective, it leaves leaving people wanting more, but feeling consistently strong is a really good approach. Like having less photos, but that are all really strong and really consistent, give someone who would potentially hire you to be a photographer, like a nice consistent vibe. And then if they're like, hey, you know, you have all portraits, we love your style, but we're curious if you could take travel photos, can you send us more Then you can like, follow up with someone in, in, in person rather than putting work that isn't as strong on your portfolio. Yeah. Um, so, so based, based off yeah, his portfolio, nice. I would assume he wants to do like lifestyle and portraits. Yeah, not, I mean, he's not a travel person. Yeah. Um, so what else is, is that all of them or there's more? I think, that, uh, I think, we, I think that's it. we have another section. We have one, one more. Last section. Oh, coffee. Definitely like a lifestyle people person. Yeah. There's a lot of really nice light as well as color. Um, see, like for me, these three photos it's are pretty too similar. similar. Yeah, yeah, these are too similar. Yeah. Um, I would pick one out of these three. For sure. Or maybe four. Because four. <laughs> it's the same angle and it's, I know like, that she's different in each one, but I think. You yeah, can, no, you can well, it's the same outfit. Like in a fashion yeah. shoot, you'd have like, you know, you have 10 different pictures, but everyone is completely different location and outfit yeah. so if you're gonna have the same person over and over you wouldn't want to have also the same location the same outfit same expression like the idea when also when you say three roasters or whatever it was um or three amigos and then something roasters but you would want to have um like i would think it would be a story about coffee and instead it's like a lot of pictures of the same vibe but if you had that and then you had like a picture of coffee and then maybe 
baristas working and then you get the sense of like this whole cafe's culture, then that would be a really nice roasters yeah, that's a great section. Versus, you know, if it says like fashion. I just want to see how you organized or what he called each section. Um, grad photos. Yeah, yeah I yeah. think section titles is something to really consider. Yeah. yeah you want to do that? Uh, and I was just going to say, you know, like with the Three Amigos section versus the coffee section, I think there's a lot more variety of content in the Three Amigos, and I think that was a stronger um, page versus the coffee one. I think the coffee one, you can choose one or two of those and throw it into like a portrait section. Um, and essentially, like most of these are portraits. It's hard to take you seriously with what you're, is on your head, but. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, this is authoritative. Like. We're astronauts. Um, so, I, so somebody in chat commented that they, they really like the photos, but they wish they were brighter. I, I mm. look at this and I see a very, uh, a very deliberate and consistent yeah. aesthetic. Yeah. What do you guys think about that aesthetic and that processing? Yeah. Um, yeah. It, to me, it's like personal preference. Like, yeah. I, I, if I were editing those photos, I probably have them personally a little brighter. But I think that he's intentionally done that and he's been consistent and that's his, his quote unquote style. So yeah. there's an, I appreciate that. Mm. All right, well, should we take a look? We have another one to take a look at. Yeah. All right, let's do it. Very different. Oh, Jan. Yeah, it's Jan, <laughs> Jan all right. Jan is like, so <laughs> you've been here for us the whole time. All right. Um, cool so, to see your work. And um, Jan, where are you in the world? With your, I'm guessing he's like he's Norway, yeah. Sweden, Come on. Sweden. I was Jan. Say Sweden. He's Where, from Norway. Oh, you're in Norway. Oh, yeah. Oslo. <laughs> cool, Jan. Um, okay. Yeah. So. <laughs> cool. So. Oh, so if, let's yeah, go back so here, to this homepage. Yeah, one here second. we're on. Um, oh, is this Instagram? This is Behance. Behance. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Chris. By the way, your yeah, portfolio. yeah. Thank you, Chris. Um, this is what we so you can click in to see it fit, and you can click in again to see it okay. fit. Okay. Cool. Anyway. Okay, so let's scroll and see like how much is there, and then we'll go back. Is that? I think this is what is we're looking it? at here. All right. Yeah. So these are like very good contrast to the last ones, like bright, poppy, um, yeah, architectural, and it's, like no. And it's a grid too. Yeah, and it's a grid. Um, one thing that someone on the last section. Gabriel had um, in his portfolio that we really did like on the Behance site is he had sort of an introduction to himself. Mm. Um, so it was like, hey, I'm Gabriel, I'm into surf, I'm into surf photography. And there was a picture of him that was a little bigger and a little design. And I feel like on a, something like Behance where it's like a community as well, um, having like a little bit more before the photography about introducing yourself to this like massive community, right? Like how many people are on Behance? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Millions and millions probably. Um, so since it is such like a social thing, um, I would say like maybe introduce yourself and, and tell people like where you are and, and also just for like, hey, I'm in Norway and maybe people who are also in Norway want to like reach out and go on like, or photo walks with you, mm -hmm. you know? Um, so that's just one thing on something that is sort of social. Um, I'm trying to think, do people normally have photography portfolios on Behance? I don't know. It's usually design, right? I they thought, do? Okay. Now they do. They're all, yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. And do they, do they, tip, is this like, can they choose different layouts? Yeah, it's all. There's like, yeah, there's a. Uh, okay. If you scroll down that project, he has like a little short description of what it is. Like oh here, yeah, here he has included a little text here about. Oh, about a the mini project. portfolio of personal photographs captured so far in the summer of 2018. The main focus have been on improving compositional awareness through color, shape, and texture. Well, that and to have fun um, it is very clear. So good job, you're doing exactly what you're trying to do. There's so much composition. Um, to the person I forget her name who was asking for, for her students, um, you know. This is a really good example of, of composition study. Uh, these images are very formal in the sense that they, um, the lines. Yeah, strong lines. There's really strong lines that are moving your eye through these, in this case, all square images. Or they're just square in the opener. I think it's just square. In the, or let's scroll through. Are they, they are all square? square. Yeah. They're square. So choosing a very strong shape, which is a square to start with, and then really strong lines that 
art is like there's really strong color and really strong lines throughout. You want to talk about some? No, yeah. just the yellow one stood out to me because it wasn't as like straight lines. Mm. So I was just curious what it was. I thought it's just like a couple straps. I like that one. Uh, should I? Should we arrow through all of these? Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'll start up here. And just stop me if you want. I like that one. Yeah, he's it's like upside down. <laughs> I like it. I like the minimal kind of aspect to a lot of these photos mm -hmm. and how, like strong lines, strong colors, but it's simple in a lot of in, in a lot of good ways, like just a couple of colors or just a couple of shapes. Well, and um, going back to that, like know what you want to take a picture of, mm -hmm. like we know really clearly what Jan is taking a picture of mm -hmm. in every single one of these photos, um, in general. Yeah, like patterns. Like, yeah, that one's fun. I like, if you go back a couple to the one with the light bulbs, I like that, um, you know, this is something I think you could go further with in that um, you're so interested, like he's so interested in color and these formal shapes and then where your mind is missing something. So because this one light bulb is missing, mm -hmm. it kind of, because the picture itself is so formal, you like very clearly notice that. So imagine if you had like a series of things where you had internal shapes within the pictures, but then there's something missing. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, maybe whatever the, t if the title was what's missing or whatever, you know, where you could play, playing with what you're focusing on visually with an idea as well, um, could be really fun. Like that's another one where it's like, you know, he's talking to the viewer in a way by messing with what you're expecting to see, right? So it's like red, the red's on the green and the green's on the red. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of playful and fun. Yeah, does he have another one that he didn't post here where he'd flipped the buckets? <laughs> but, no. I like that one. Yeah, it's beautiful. Water, or is that a mountain? Oh, it's a mountain. I think it's a mountain. Yeah. It looks like a wave for a second. It really does, doesn't it? Yeah. Like a big ocean swell. Mm -hmm. All right. Project again. Um, I would say, I think it's really fun, just overall um, and consistent. Um, there is like a wider variety of stuff I think where you could either like break things out a little bit into sort of landscapes versus more conceptual type of work um, like it's it's small and because it's so strong compositionally it all works well together but I think if like he keeps going to like um, you know if you had the buckets and that cross of light bulbs and say like that image with the crossed architecture and another one that was like a f grid of four, it would all of a sudden be like super, super tight in a way um, that could be nice in like a section or to just keep going with, you know, if you're like, if that's sort of your style, you could have like a whole feed or a whole section of a website that was like ultra compositional. Whereas like when you have the landscapes, there's more more pictures that you've seen that are sort of like that landscape. And so the landscape has strong compositional lines because that's something he's really clearly drawn to, but it's not as like unique of a point of view as with like the buckets or the light bulbs to me. Yeah, I, I, I would say, I would agree with Emily. I think you can separate these into like two categories and with the stronger graphical, colorful, uh, compositions, I think that would be a really strong story to group them all together and to view them all back to back uh, versus kind of intermixing the, some of the people or landscapes in between. And I think there's definitely some potential with playing with like color stories too. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of like strong yellows, oranges, blues, and maybe maybe thinking about a creative way to, to group those together and create like a viewing experience when you scroll through your portfolio it could be helpful too. I like that it's like a summer portfolio and knowing that like the, it feels very summery. The pictures feel like very, even though you're not necessarily seeing people doing any sort of summer activities, like 
it feels really vivid and sunny and bright and like like you're having a good summer. <laughs> and I think uh, you're um, welcome, Jan. Thanks so much for sharing. Yeah, we have like one minute. Yeah, I'll, thanks, I'll, Jan. Yeah, thank cool. you, Jan. That was awesome, and thank you guys for all that really thoughtful feedback. Sure. Um, uh, it's time for my extravehicular activity. So, um, uh, thank you guys for. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with. That. I don't know. Here, yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm not going with in you. A Wherever you're going with it, I'm okay. going with you. So I'm, I'm uh, disappearing. We're opening the airlock. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Yeah. Thank you, Emily and Dan, so much for, yeah. for joining us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, it was really so fun. fun. This is really. Thanks fantastic. for submitting your portfolios, guys. Um, tell you. us again, really quickly, your URLs, your Instagram handles. Emily, Nathan, Tiny Atlas Quarterly, that's our Instagram and our website. I'm Dan Tom, and my Instagram is Dan Tom. And that, he how are we going to remember that? Yeah. <laughs> know, it's, it's, it blows people's minds. And, and we, uh, we do Adobe Live here every week, so you guys can tune in next week as well. Yeah, Thank thanks. you so much for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.